On this edition of EDR Tech, we're going to be talking about some unique characteristics about obtaining EDR data from Tesla vehicles. In addition, we'll talk about systems other than the traditional crash data that contain additional data that may be available in a Tesla, including data logs and even camera images. Now joining me today is Miles Kitchen. Miles is an expert in automotive electrical systems. Miles has an associate's and a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering and has 50 years experience specializing in vehicle electronics in various industries. And we're excited to have him with us today. Well, Miles, I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us here today and share with us some of your wealth of knowledge uh, on vehicle electronics, specifically with Tesla vehicles. Yes. Uh, thanks, Scott. Ha thanks for having me, and I uh, look forward to talking with you about this. So Teslas have this mystique about them, right, about being some super tech car. But are there electronic systems or their communication networks, are they different from other car manufacturers? Well, yes, uh, they are different. Um, they're using a lot of similar technology to er earlier vehicles. Um, I think... Uh, if you look at uh, the, the slide where I show uh, what the electrical architecture of a typical car uh, in, in you know ice or a hybrid car today looks like, you can see it uh, it has lots and lots of ECUs. The there are actually cars on the road with more than 150 electronic control units in them now. A uh, hundred plus sensors, um, over a mile of uh, 1,500 to 2,000 copper wires that weigh 110 pounds or more. Um, they have as many as 1,500 plus connectors, and those connectors have um, more than 9,000 individual terminals. In them. So uh, that uh, architecture that current cars have evolved to is uh, really a result of uh, how cars were uh, designed and engineered uh, over this period of time when electronics were developing. And, and so uh, automotive engineers were in various silos working on things like powertrain or entertainment, uh, climate controls, etc. And those groups working on those things were beginning to incorporate electronics and they all worked on individual uh, applications and weren't thinking of the vehicle as a complete system. So I, I, I attribute that as one of the major factors that people working in different uh, buildings, different states, different countries, weren't uh, looking at the overall picture of what the electronics in a complete vehicle should look like. Uh, and that's what's brought us here. So then uh, Tesla vehicles don't Kind of follow that methodology then as far as breaking everything down into unique operating systems and then somehow getting them to work together their te teslas are different y yes so um i i've uh, provided a slide looking at the what ha model y is the uh, current uh, best-selling car in many uh, categories right now and so i've kind of uh, outlined the difference in the architecture here, uh, this is based on a, on a view from Tesla's uh, maintenance uh, site. Uh, you can see that uh, there's already less wiring in this car than the typical car that we showed earlier. Um, the Model Y has 11 ECUs, or electronic control units, um, for 48 sensors. It has a higher speed um, automotive ethernet and it has advanced CAN buses uh, that uh, are uh, simpler than those in some other cars. And uh, they only have 328 feet of wiring, according to Tesla. Uh, and the Y has only 518 connectors, which is about 4,000 terminals. So as we compared it to uh, an electric car, uh, uh, internal combustion or a hybrid, uh, you can see it's it's really much much simpler. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and that makes sense um, as as far as that and all the data driven that they've incorporated into, um, I guess, a simpler way of doing it. Well, exactly. And of course, uh, being an electric vehicle, uh, it doesn't have to have any really uh, emissions controls. There's no uh, tailpipe. There's no uh, 
uh, uh, uh, sensors uh, for a uh, air quality or an air fuel ratio and that sort of thing. So it's um, it, it, the electric approach and the electric platform is all around the simpler uh, to architect and control than uh, the traditional cars we're used to. Okay, so um, with that being said, um, we're, we're talking about the different data that we can get from cars, specifically Teslas today. And we know that Teslas have event data recorders as part of their airbag modules, as, as do uh, similar with other vehicles. But um, why don't you talk a little bit about the differences with uh, the communication networks or connecting to a Tesla to get the traditional EDR crash data? Well, yes. So Teslas um, have used um, uh, off-the-shelf uh, restraint control modules, like many other cars do, and uh, those uh, those modules uh, record the, the data. And you need tools uh, to uh, extract that data, whether it's a, a traditional car or a, or a Tesla. Uh, Tesla has uh, their own kit, which uh, Crash Data Group. Uh, distributes and uh, you can do it just like you did uh, uh, other cars with the exception of there is no diagnostic logic uh, port in a Tesla. Uh, you have to connect to a CAN bus connector uh, because the Teslas just don't have a, a requirement for the, um, uh, the uh, traditional port that's used by others. And that's the standard OBD2 port that you find yes, in, in, in all other vehicles? Yeah, known, by, known as OBD2 or uh, SAEJ1962, I believe it is, or a DLC. Um, yeah, it's uh, there were a few in some Teslas, but many don't don't have it. Um, and uh, so it's it, diagnostics are done differently on a Tesla, as is uh, uh, the EDR extraction. And where can you find information about the location of the? Uh, CAN bus connectors and, and and that for Tesla vehicles. Yes, so uh, I uh, you can go to the uh, edr.tesla.com site. Uh, that's where you would sign up to to use the tools. Um, and uh, Tesla has guides uh, on their website for each model and each variation in in the models. Some. Uh, the port locations have changed at uh, various uh, production change uh, dates, and uh, and between the models, they're not all in the in the same place. But uh, if you visit the Tesla site, uh, so there's actually three sites that are, may be useful to uh, folks doing this. One is service.tesla.com, uh, and that's where service documents and owners manuals and technical information. Uh, is available about all the Tesla models. And then if you're an EDR uh, uh, user, you, there is the edr.com, uh, edr.tesla.com site uh, where you register to do the downloads. And um, I could spend a moment talking about that. The, um, the download uh, is, uh, produces a, a .edr file uh, when you're using the tools to uh, extract data from from the restraint control module, and that would be equivalent to the uh, the raw data file, the .cdrx file with the Bosch system. That's your raw data file, the .edr file with Tesla. Yes, you're exactly right. That that would be the equivalent of it for a Tesla. Uh, so when you're using the Bosch tool uh, for other cars, then you your uh, laptop would be running the CDR program to translate that raw file into a PDF report with uh, data and charts and graphs. Uh, Tesla does the same thing, but it's not being processed on your own laptop. It's just being a, a gateway to send that to Tesla's edr.tesla.com uh, site. And then uh, Tesla has an automated server on their uh, website or on their uh, you know their uh, portal that takes the raw file that you uh, have uh, retrieved from the vehicle or the um, the RCM and then translates it to a readable PDF 
and it'll send it back to you, to your laptop in about, it takes about one minute. Uh, I've done it a number of times and it, it works uh, smoothly uh, and uh, it does something very similar to what uh, you're used to doing with the Bosch tool. Yeah, and then um, you're also able to do it direct to module as well with the uh, with the Tesla hardware kit that uh, that we sell at Crash Data Group. So that and and the, the 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 principles and concepts to do a direct to module download or even the in vehicle using their special CAN bus connector, it's the same as with the other tools at that point, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, for for those uh, those applications, uh, yeah, they're they're very very similar to doing it uh, as you would on a on a traditional car. Excellent. So, um, if uh, doing an in-vehicle download um, and working with a Tesla, um, obviously it's if, if, if it's likely been involved in an accident, and they have a high voltage drive battery, right? Which is separate from their the, the battery that uh, operates the electronics in in the car. Are there any special precautions people should know when dealing with a Tesla, especially a wrecked one, uh, when retrieving data? Well, yes. Uh, so very, the first thing you really need to assess when you approach a, uh, a, a vehicle you're being asked to examine uh, is, is, does it have power? Uh, can, it even, can it even be powered up? Because um, you can't open the doors or the frunk where the auxiliary battery is uh, without the vehicle having 12 volt power. Uh, it also, is, you know, is it operational? Is it completely discharged? or is there perhaps some uh, power remaining in the 12 volt battery, but you'll have to gain access to do that. Uh, the other thing you should do before attempting to do anything is walk around the vehicle and look at where, was there damage that uh, may have impacted the high voltage lines. Um, I've, I've posted uh, uh, some photos of a couple of cases where uh, one, the vehicle was damaged mildly, but you had to get access to the front to connect the, uh, uh, the jumper box to be able to download. Uh, and then uh, there's one where I show uh, the front wheel was uh, knocked off this uh, particular vehicle, it hit a tree. And in the, um, the A pillar area on the passenger side, you can see on the photo there's some orange uh, covered cables. The orange covered cables in Teslas are high voltage and you should use extreme caution when you see those exposed, certainly. In this case, uh, the impact got into the battery pack uh, corner of it. It fortunately did not uh, ignite and it's very possible in this crash that the pyrotechnic uh, disconnect uh, engaged and disconnected the high voltage uh, for uh, because because of this. However, um, I've also seen other Teslas where uh, uh, they they were in a, in a relatively light accident, uh, got towed to a storage facility, and then uh, ignited uh, self ignited uh, 24 hours later, uh, causing a, a damage to not only the the subject vehicle but other stored vehicles in, in the area and the fire department had to put water on it for quite a while. So um, something to know is that if there is a battery pack fire, those are very difficult to extinguish and take um, constant water flow over them to get them to cool down so they can, they can go out. Um, there's also um, precautions I suggest you take uh, when you're gonna work on a Tesla, uh, you should probably uh, or any uh, hybrid, uh, for that matter, that, that has uh, some high voltage uh, batteries in them. You would want to remove any jewelry, particularly rings or uh, metal watch bands, that sort of thing, a necklace, if you wear one. Uh, you don't want to put yourself at risk. You know, even take pens and keys from your pockets uh, uh, if you're going to be in close quarters where uh, you don't want something arcing uh, over to you. Um, I've, I've also posted uh, some photos here. These are actual tools that, that I own um, for uh, e examining EVs and hybrids. Uh, you want to use uh, tools, insulated tools that are 1,000 volts rated. And if you notice on the handles of the hand tools, uh, there are provisions in the uh, insulated handles 
to help keep your hands back from the uh, conductive part of the tool. And so if your hand should slip, uh, this will help stop that. And you don't want to accidentally bump up against uh, high voltage. Uh, you'll note the screwdrivers all have insulated shafts. Uh, the socket set is all insulated extensions and insulated sockets and a ratchet. And the open end wrenches are also fully insulated, except right in the part that contacts the uh, nut you want to uh, take on or off. And then also recommend you have some 1,000 volt rated uh, high voltage rubber gloves uh, for times when you have to get close and you're just a little too, <laughs> too worried about making contact. So uh, yeah, I, I, please use uh, protective equipment. And I would also uh, mention and this I learned years ago when I was co-oping uh, at a, uh, a company that made uh, conveyor controls. Uh, and the control panels for industrial conveyors are high voltage in big metal cabinets. And uh, the rule then was you should approach the, 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 the uh, source of high voltage with your palms facing yourself, facing your face, because if you do accidentally touch something, you might have a muscular uh, uh, reaction that would tend to pull your hands into it. And when you bump it with the back of your hand, it's going to bump, <laughs> it's going to force you to go back uh, away from it. So uh, approach things very cautiously and keep that in mind if you're going to have to get close to the high voltage uh, sources. Uh, un understood and great information. Um, would, would you say that that's uh, just something for the most part to be aware of? Do Teslas have like a power disconnect if it's involved in an accident that it disconnects the, 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 the high voltage battery? I've heard that. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, yes, the, um, uh, there's a pyrotechnic um, that's triggered by, you know, in, the impact by the RCM that uh, will disconnect battery, uh, the battery pack. Um, but you shouldn't assume that happened. <laughs> uh, you know, you should still be cautious around it because there, even though it disconnects from other places the power may go, the battery pack itself uh, is still going to be live, you know, if it hasn't been uh, substantially damaged. So uh, you got to use, you know, good judgment and be more cautious than you would around a, a normal vehicle or, a, you know, a, what you're used to with just uh, internal combustion. Understood. Um, so in addition to the, the high voltage drive battery, do Teslas have a, a, a 12 volt battery to operate the vehicle's electrical system uh, as well. And is that something you, when performing a download or retrieving EDR data that, that, uh, that can, like any other car battery, can uh, go dead uh, if it's sitting in a tow lot or something like that, that you would have to power up to do uh, a Tesla download. Yes, you, you will need uh, the 12 volt power to uh, successfully accomplish a download. Uh, if you remove the module, then you need 12 volt power either from a jumper box or a AC adapter, uh, you know, rated to uh, power the module for downloading. Uh, but yes, the so the Teslas um, all have this uh, 12 volt battery currently that's uh, in the front of the vehicle between the, what they call the frunk, the front storage, front trunk, uh, and the, what would be the firewall area or the cowling. And uh, you'll, you'll have to use uh, jumpers in some cases to open the frunk. Uh, so on various modules, I've uh, included a slide, early Model S's uh, that have what looks like a grill, but it's really just a plastic cover. You can pull that cover away, and in behind it, you'll find a plus and minus post where you can attach a jumper box, and then go back in the car, unlock it, open the open the frunk from the uh, the screen. Uh, it will open the uh, the electrical uh, latch on the frunk. Uh, on the Model Threes and Model Ys. There's a, on the front bumper cover, there's a little plug hole that uh, if you push in on the uh, outboard side of it, it will swivel out. And it's, it's where the tow hook would be attached in that hole, but it's also got a 
a, a red and black wire attached to the plug that you could pull out, and you'll see the black wire, attach your jumper box to that, and then that will open the front latch so you can get into the 12 volt <clears throat> supply. It doesn't charge it, so you'll have to, once you've opened it, then you'll have to move your jumper box up to the 12 volt battery that's behind the front. There's a, a cover, a plastic cover that just pulls off and uh, you'll, you'll see the, the battery, uh, it, the locations vary slightly between models, but you, you'll be able to uh, do that. And then once you can, uh, of course, test that battery to, with a voltmeter to see if it's discharged or you can uh, go ahead and uh, put your jumper box on just to be safe. And that will power uh, the 12 volt uh, operating parts of the car, which include the door locks, windows, um, the screen, uh, the computer for the screen, and will allow you to access uh, functions in the vehicle as well as perform um, the download via the CAN bus. Excellent. Um, so now that we've uh, assumably got 12 volts supplied to the car, it's up and, and, and ready to go, you talked briefly about the CAN connector for an in-vehicle download, and they're different in Tesla models. Uh, can you go over the, the different locations and what you know about the, the CAN connector? Uh, sure. So on uh, Model S's and uh, X3 uh, 2021, uh, the, the, uh, the screen in the S and X is a vertical screen. And at the bottom of the vertical screen is uh, a trim piece on the early ones. And in later ones, there's a phone dock there. So uh, on the ones without the phone dock, you just pull out the trim piece. It pops right off. And then it, there's a little cubby area under, under the screen. You stick your hand in, and you'll feel a loose connector that's, that's in there. You can just pull it out. Uh, it'll come out a few inches, and then you can connect to it. So it's uh, pretty easy on that one. Uh, on the later ones, you'll have to actually follow the guide, the EDR guide, and physically remove the phone dock uh, that's under the screen. And then it's the same thing. There's a behind that. There's a, a connector, uh, the uh, connector for the uh, downloading. So on, on model threes and uh, model Ys. So let's talk about the threes first. There's two different locations uh, they could be in early ones the the, the connector you're going to uh, connect to is actually connected to a harness and it's behind the b pillar uh, near the floor uh, so you'll have to actually uh, remove the right hand uh, end cap on the instrument panel and from the front door starting at the front you have to remove the it's a one-piece molded uh, trim that goes from the A pillar uh, along the door threshold into the B pillar. You have to move, remove all that so you can gain access to the, the connector that's behind the B pillar. On uh, er later Model 3s and all Model Ys, uh, they've moved that connector to the uh, right-hand passenger kick panel area. So again, you have to remove the right-hand end cap of the instrument panel, the uh, uh, trim, the, the upper A, A trim and lower A pillar trim, uh, and then pull the kick panel away. And you'll find that that's a blue connector that's loose, that it's not connected to a, anything else. And uh, you'll see it in the, in the slide. There's a photo of it. Also, that this is all laid out in the uh, EDR guides that are published on uh, where where to go get those? So those are the those are the CAN bus connector locations that you would go to to uh, read it in the vehicle. Right, um, excellent. If if for some reason you're having trouble difficulties getting the data through the uh, in vehicle CAN connector, or uh, for law enforcement maybe that uh, has a search warrant and removed the, the the RCM, where where are the different RCM locations? in Tesla vehicles uh, if you needed to go direct to module? Okay, this one's pretty easy. Uh, in Model S's, they're all on the, um, the front floor uh, in front of the console. Uh, so right as far forward just about as you can go uh, beneath the console. You, you might, uh, you, you have to follow the guide that really removes some things, 
if you have small hands, perhaps you can work your way in without having to take the console fully out. I've uh, heard those it, are I've heard those are pretty labor intensive on the on the uh, on the model uh, S and, and, and X. Yes, to take well and the X as well uh, because to take the console out, you have to start at the back and then start releasing fasteners and uh, various trim pieces and things, and then you pick it up from the back. Uh, and then that'll give, give you access to the front. You might not get it all the way out, but uh, you can finally see it. Um, in the models uh, 3 and uh, Y and the X, they're all under the console, about in the center, about near the center of the seat, uh, the seat cushion bottom. And so that's th those you're going to have to do some removal of the console to gain access to it especially if you're going to remove it completely to get access to the bolts to release it. And those locations are also contained in the, the download instruction guides that Tesla produces, correct? Yes, exactly. With with step-by-step -step, uh, instructions on what, you know, what steps to follow to, to get gain access. Right. Okay, so um, if you're connected to the CAN, uh, CAN bus through the in-vehicle connector or direct to module, what are the basic download procedures using the Tesla EDR retrieval uh, software and, and hardware components? <clears throat> okay, so um, if you're going to do it uh, uh, connecting to the CAN uh, connectors, uh, of course you'll have to gain access to those and uh, have the proper cables from uh, Crash Data Group. Um, there are uh, th three cables uh, that cover the range of Tesla vehicles for uh, doing it through the CAN, and then there are three separate cables uh, for going direct to module for the various variations of uh, modules they've been using for, for these, uh, the, the production and the model range. Um, if, you're, if you're doing it in the vehicle, you will need to make sure that the 12 volts is adequate uh, uh, for powering uh, the RCM and the, the, the test. Uh, if it's not, I uh, recommend you use a jumper back, excuse me, a jumper box or an appropriate uh, power supply. Um, sometimes uh, I, I don't like to recommend putting it on a charger because chargers are electrically noisy. Um, and so a, uh, a regulated power supply uh, at uh, you know 12 and a half volts or a bit higher will uh, uh, give you nice clean, power to conduct the, the, the download. Um, if, the vehicle, if the 12 volt battery is fully charged, however, you should be able to do it on the battery just, just fine. Again, follow, follow the procedures there. And do you need, <clears throat> a, do you need a, uh, what would be the equivalent of a key? Like for other downloads, you need to power up the car's electrical system, whether it be the key card or a key fob to do an in-vehicle download. The, the car has to be powered up just like others. What, how does that yes. work with Teslas? Yes, of course. Of course, the, yes, the vehicle would have to be on, and and to turn it on, um, it depends. There's various ways you can turn on a Tesla. There is a credit card uh, key that first to get into the car. If you if you're not familiar with it, you hold the key on the B pillar about halfway up, uh, and that should allow you to unlock uh, the door and open the door. And then once the, you have the door open, if you have power, uh, you put the uh, key, and I know on the three and Y, I believe it, uh, there's also a key location for the S and X. I'd have to look those up. But the, uh, on the three and Y, it's, it's on the center console, uh, just behind the cup holders and in front of the cubby box on the console. You just lay it flat and that will allow you uh, that that'll allow the car to turn on and uh, activate the the 12 volt power. Um, if if that you know if you don't have that power, you do have to again go up to the trunk and access the 12 volt battery and attach a 12 volt source suitable source there to uh, to do it. Uh, once you have the 12 volts, then you can go ahead and uh, and perform the download. Excellent. So that's. Um... Pretty basic to get the traditional EDR crash data out of the RCM. You know, I often get inquiries about Tesla data logs or log files and, and, and that. What can you tell me about Tesla data logs uh, 
and how, how they can be obtained, what type of useful information they may have for what we do in traffic accident investigations. Uh, you well, know, yes, car, uh, the Tesla car logs, as I call them, I just call them car logs. Uh, they probably have a, an official name. But uh, so Tesla's, uh, other cars are starting to do something similar to this, but Tesla's have been doing it for quite a while. Um, because the Tesla's um, operate as a network and the all of the devices in the car are connected to the network and everything has a CAN ID, um, they, have, they basically monitor everything uh, that's going on in the vehicle uh, uh, on many levels. And the, the data that they have, it's estimated there might be as many as 1,500 to 2,000 uh, individual monitored parameters uh, in Tesla's. Uh, uh, I, I'll give you, a, I'll show you an example in a bit. Uh, the the data you get from them doesn't include all 2,000 uh, data points. You, the, the data you would request and get back varies from uh, individual case to case. Um, the the recording of the data, and for the most part, is can be provided up to one millisecond resolution, which is you know, one one thousandth of a second, which is quite uh, quite high, and uh, uh, that data is actually stored uh, in the car when you're using it, uh, and when you're not using it, uh, and it's being written to uh, in the in the earlier cars, it's written to a full size SD card uh, of eight gigabytes, and in the later threes and Ys. It's written to a micro SD card of 16 gigabit, uh, gigabytes in, in each car. And then that data is periodically uploaded to Tesla's servers where they capture uh, all that data. They use it for uh, you know, AI. They use it for improving uh, the way things operate and monitor, monitoring the way things operate. And in recent months, uh, probably since um, late last year, um, they uh, have begun making it available uh, to owners upon request because, uh, again, with the privacy laws in certain states, the data uh, that uh, is produced in your vehicle when you're driving it is considered uh, individual's private data. And, and so, uh, again, uh, like we mentioned earlier, you can go to the uh, privacy site uh, at Tesla and put in that request, and you will get uh, car log data and and the DR data if you request that uh, all you know together in response to your request. Right. So I so, have a question about the SD cards that that you mentioned. Assuming you're able to access this SD card, is the data contained on the SD card? usable in, in the format as contained on the SD card, or does it have to somehow be translated? Can, is, is, you understand my question? Y yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, yes, uh, the data is on the SD card, and I've retrieved SD cards and uh, read them. <laughs> uh, and, and you can't, there's very, very little discernible data um, that you can get because you, you, you don't, most people don't have the proper tools or interpreting uh, software to uh, to turn that raw data into meaningful readable data, uh, and and now that Tesla has uh, started making that available to forensic investigators and law enforcement and owners and others, um, uh, you know it's uh, uh, it's easier to request it than to attempt to uh, interpret it. Now, having said that, there are people, including myself, who uh, have uh, accessed that data, uh, looked at it, trying to figure out, you know, how can we uh, look for a tool, look for some software to um, uh, provide a, another source of information about what was going on in the vehicle. Uh, thus far, I don't know of any tools that do that. Um, there's activity going on by uh, you know, uh, hackers and by uh, amateur uh, 
uh, you know, uh, cybersecurity type folks that uh, perhaps have had some breakthroughs in some aspects of it. But again, um, it's um, it's not something you can just pull out and use. Uh, it is uh, uh, perhaps of some evidence value. Uh, it, you know, if you do uh, do a download and you also capture that data, uh, there may be a time when a tool is available to turn that data into something that hopefully would agree with Tesla's data, or maybe maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's. Um, it, it's accessible. You can the uh, threes and the Ys. Uh, there's a port uh, on the on the passenger uh, floorboard where the bottom of the computer is is visible, and there's a, the slot where you could release the card and, and copy it. On the S's and X's, it's uh, it's behind the uh, screen, and behind it's on the back side of the computer assembly that's behind the screen. So it requires a fair amount of, uh, of disassembly to gain access to it. However, the, the Tesla service documents, uh, if you, uh, you know, inquire, will give you the step-by-step -step directions of how to find and extract the SD card. And um, you can copy it uh, to a hard drive or you copy it to another SD card. Um, it's, it's, um, formatted uh, such that it's it can the files can be copied but they can't be interpreted understood um, so going back to the the car log files that you would receive from Tesla those are more user friendly that's got information and laid out and, and that you have some examples of that uh, yes so the way um, Tesla would provide um, the car log data is in a what's called a .csv file uh, for comma separated values. That's familiar to computer people. It's uh, a kind of a standard uh, database uh, uh, arrangement for processing uh, large amounts of data in, in, a, in a database. So uh, to read that file, <clears throat> excuse me, to read that file, you would you can open it with a program like uh, Excel uh, or Numbers if, if an app on an Apple platform or other spreadsheet uh, programs might also open it. Uh, and I would recommend if you if you do receive the uh, the CSV file, keep that as a CSV file as the as the raw file, unedited, unchanged. Uh, because if you do try to edit it and uh, save it uh, in Excel, it won't save. <laughs> so it, it, you you should save it as an XLS uh, X spreadsheet, and then you can do things like uh, you know reformat the headings so they're more readable, uh, expand the, the rows and columns, uh, hide rows and columns so you can zero in on uh, the uh, areas of interest in in, in what will, will work out to be a large amount of data. In fact, um, I have a, sl a slide, <clears throat> uh, actually a couple slides, uh, that'll give you a feeling for what it is. This one's uh, an anonymized, uh, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, revealing uh, all the data. I'm just g giving you some example uh, segments of what you would expect. So, uh, uh, the, the example I'm showing you, it happens to be the largest um, uh, car log data file that I've personally uh, seen to date. That doesn't mean that there won't be bigger ones or won't be smaller ones. But this particular file consisted of uh, 209 columns of those potential 1,500 to 2,000 parameters. Uh, so it, it had 209 columns, meaning... Um, variables, settings, alerts, things that uh, uh, have some nomenclature and meaning in the vehicle. And then there were 28,468 rows in the timeline. And that uh, timeline covered a period of five hours, 39 minutes, and 53 seconds. So you can see you can get a lot of data <laughs> uh, accumulated very quickly. Now, there is a time log, uh, uh, you know, a date and time uh, 
log that's consistent with how it's captured in the car and how it's stored at Tesla. So it's reasonably precise. It's reported based on universal uh, time, coordinated universal time, UTC, uh, which is also known as Greenwich Mean Time. Um, and so the example that, that I'm uh, uh, going to show you some pieces from it is nearly 6 million individual data cells in the spreadsheet. So you, you can see it's, it, it's formidable, <laughs> and, and it, it, would it takes some time to really uh, d d dive into it and, and understand it. So what I'm going to show you and what I'm showing you is just a small piece. The, um, the, the first example here uh, shows the uh, line one, which is where the uh, data descriptions are usually given. And sometimes they're uh, uh, obvious, and sometimes they're, uh, they don't give signing conventions always, and they don't tell you precisely units. or So you have to do some interpreting of what they are. But if you look at the example, you'll see that there are some variables in here that would be useful in accident investigation. Um, uh, there are things like the gear selection, the vehicle speed, uh, steering angle, throttle, uh, position in percent, uh, and you know a, a number of these things. But there are you know many, 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 many more. Um, other things are so some cells will have values measurements uh, in them. Others will have perhaps an alert uh, message uh, in it. It might show you just on or off. For example, there's a, um, a column for brake applied or not applied. So when a, when a brake is pressed, there is a signal that says, you know, brake pressed. And when it's released, there's a not pressed. <laughs> so um, it's, um, there's a lot of, lot of data. Uh, Moving on, what I typically do when I uh, want to analyze these is go and look for uh, 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 messages from the re restraint control module, which will usually give you a message like it's uh, waking up or it's active and uh, there's an event uh, going on. And then again, this, so this example is in a, an Excel spreadsheet now. And so I can color various rows and columns to make it easier to find parts of an event or, uh, you know, follow uh, backwards to what led up to the event. And, and then, it, you know, it's, a, it's an analysis of all these individual uh, parameters, which uh, are quite useful for doing forensic analysis in uh, to be consistent with other evidence that you may have collected or others has collected from from an incident. Okay, so now the the data logs and the samples that you that you've shown us those are obtained from the Tesla owner with a records request through Tesla, correct? That's correct. That uh, that's the only way I, I I know you could get them. I think the Tesla has probably responded to uh, subpoenas uh, uh, in some cases for that. Um, and so, and they've, they have, uh, the other thing I noticed that, uh, between, um, models and between, you know, incidents, the, the list of the parameters, um, may be very different. Um, and some may be, uh, English uh, descriptions and some may look like a CAN bus, uh, IDs or CAN bus. Uh, headers, if you will. Uh, so there's, you know, you can expect to find uh, many things in here that aren't immediately obvious uh, what they're telling you. <laughs> Understood. So finally, with Tesla especially, I get asked a lot about video, camera, images, because there's a bunch of cameras in Tesla vehicles. And it, are, are, are the camera images, video, is it available? And if so, how would one go about getting uh, camera or video images? Okay, so there are, um, there are images captured in Teslas, and uh, uh, there's some folks in the Netherlands who are uh, researching Model S's, early Model S's, and they were actually able to re retrieve some still images. Um, 
from those uh, data log of the the uh, SD cards that we talked about. I uh, haven't found any images on any of the cards I've looked at, but what uh, is available in Tesla's uh, is a, a way you can record uh, what's called sentry mode and or dash cam videos. Uh, and those require that the owner configure, uh, obtain and configure a, either a USB stick uh, or a USB uh, solid state hard drive. And you can connect those to the vehicle. Um, in some vehicles, that USB port that's live for more than just charging is in the glove box, uh, certainly on the S and X. And in some of the Model 3s and Ys, uh, you can put it in the console. Uh, but you really need to check that, because some later ones came with uh, USB ports in the console that were only for charging, not for data. So you got to make sure you're connecting to a data-connected um, USB port. And it's formatted in FAT32, and you create a um, uh, sub a directory called uh, Tesla Cam, I believe, and that information is available on the uh, Tesla uh, uh, owner's site uh, as well as in the owner's manual. And once they're installed, uh, they will record uh, various uh, on various triggers. Uh, so the the Sentry mode is kind of a security cam, if you will. It uses the uh, Tesla front camera the uh, f uh, rear camera uh, that's on the uh, trunk or hatch, uh, the right-looking rearward camera from the right front fender, and the left-looking rearward from the left front uh, fender front camera, uh, will record streams from all of those, uh, and, and uh, inside if you've enabled uh, uh, dog mode. And so, uh, it will, it will have streams from each of those cameras that are triggered and record for a, for a period of, of time uh, in individual uh, clips. Uh, so it, it, will, it will record over uh, prior videos if you don't download them or, uh, or you know, clear your drive and start over again. And it records only video, no audio. Uh, and uh, it will it can be triggered by a number of things. So you, there's an icon on the screen uh, if you have dash cam set up. It looks like a little camera. And if you want to capture uh, seconds of video prior to and during and after, you just press the button and it will, it will begin the recording and capture process uh, and, and store clips for you. Uh, it, it will also record if if your car is parked and locked and uh, it detects motion nearby uh, from any of the from any of the cameras if someone gets too close uh, if a car bangs into you or someone keys your car uh, now all of those things will um, trigger your your uh, sentry mode recording uh, when you're driving uh, then it's uh, there's also a dash cam mode and uh, so hard braking, uh, any uh, impact, uh, sounding your horn, uh, or any sort of a, a sharp shock or impact will again set it into recording mode and capture capture clips. Uh, to view the clips, you just simply uh, remove the device from the vehicle and uh, put it into your laptop or uh, you know other device that would show video. And uh, you can you can capture it and copy it there. Uh, like as I said, if it when it fills up, it starts over again. So it it slowly records over whatever you had on it uh, previously. And then I mentioned dog mode. Um, you have, it has Teslas have a mode when you're leaving the vehicle. You can have the climate control remain at a setting. Uh, so your pets or infants or whatever uh, are fine while you're not in the vehicle. Uh, and on the phone app for the Tesla, you can access uh, the sentry cam, and including the dog mode, and you can look in and see if your dogs are okay or your infant's okay. Um, and you can also uh, answer 
the back, uh, if someone's near your car, uh, they're for the vehicles equipped with an external speaker, some are, uh, you can talk back to the vehicle uh, and it, it comes out through the speaker that's underneath underneath the car and try to encourage them to not mess with your car. <laughs> so, um, but that, that if there is an impact uh, and the system has been provisioned by setting up the, the hard drives or the USB stick ahead of time, uh, you will likely uh, have captured video. <clears throat> There's no other video that's stored in the car without that, that that I'm aware of that you can access. Tesla may have some that got uploaded, but... Uh, I... Yeah, that was going to be one of my questions. Is, is, is there any other local system on the car that is storing video or, or, or camera images, or is it all on the Tesla owner-configured thumb drive or hard drive that they... Uh, that they set up? Well, to my knowledge, the ones you can access are only the ones that are provisioned and uh, ahead of time. Now, Tesla has used uh, image capturing from vehicles to improve the self-driving AI. Um, to, to my own knowledge, that hasn't been provided to anyone I'm aware of uh, via the car log data. I think it's strictly for their use and uh, they do claim that anything they captured in terms of images has been anonymized and, um, you know, not tied to a VIN or an owner. Okay, so um, even through a records request from a Tesla owner to Tesla for, the, for any data Tesla may have, video images are not part of that. They, they... Well, well, I'm not aware of anyone that has received that in any of the cases I've worked on. However, there were, there were these reports in Europe that, these uh, um, guys researching Teslas were able to uh, capture some impact uh, photos uh, from uh, the uh, the, the car, car log data in the car, but uh, they haven't disclosed how they've done that yet. And I, I'm not aware of any tool you can access right now that could provide that to you. Excellent. Well, Miles, I think that's going to uh, wrap it up for us today. You are a wealth of knowledge uh, on Tesla, especially uh, like uh, like we kind of went over. The te Teslas are a technology-driven car. They're different than uh, what the auto industry has been used to, and I think some others will follow suit in that. I think that's kind of where the car industry is going. But I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us and share some of your knowledge uh, to, to us about uh, Tesla vehicles. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, and I hope this is helpful for others. And uh, uh, reach out if you need to get a hold of me. <laughs> and that's it for this edition of EDR Tech. Again, a big thank you to Miles for sharing his knowledge on Tesla data systems. Now, if there's a topic you'd like to see covered on a future edition of EDR Tech, please let us know. Click on the subscribe button, and you'll be notified when the next edition has been posted. And as always, if you have any questions about any of the EDR retrieval tools, Bosch, Hyundai, Kia, or Tesla, just give us a call or go to crashdatagroup.com.